very good morning to all my YouTube friends and Facebook friends. Today is Tuesday morning, October the 4th, 2016. This is lecture number three. The main topic, what was the body type of Adam and Eve at creation before the fall? First, holy, angelic, immortal body type versus human mortal body type. The following points are my analysis of the being a priest for the Nerea and Tuka tribes of Mesopotamia and Antolia or Turkey today, from creation to the popular Ra or Matau tribe of the ancient Near East in the 2500 BC to 500 BC in Egypt after the flood. Then the diaspora of our tribe from 500 BCE to 500 AD in its disband and into secrecy until we came to Fiji in AD 900. These are the results of investigations when I started attending church in January 1991 to December 31st 1992 where I analyzed the facts and truths of esoteric studies with its offerings and beliefs of its white and black magic on cosmic and mystical powers. Then my comparative analysis against the data provided in the Holy Scripture as I did further advanced studies at seminary in Papua New Guinea and Greek advanced studies in Greek 1 to 4 and Hebrews 1 to 2. Body senses of our angels Holy Angels Immortal Body Type versus Human Mortal Body Type versus Evil Angel um, uh, Mortal Body Type. These are three different body types. Let me go through them again. Holy Angels have Immortal Body Angelic Body Type. Evil Angels have Mortal Body Humans now have mortal human body. They were given temporal immortal body type at creation. The proof of above statements can be found from the Bible. A. Angels eat and drink and relate with human as well. Human ate angel like food. Psalm 78 verses 25. Men did eat the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. So we see here that even holy angels do need eat. Do need to eat. Lo, they have immortal body type. Not in order to have immortal body type, but even their immortal body type has to be fed and nourished as the law of nature. Everything has to eat to survive. God's body type of immortality does not need this. The need food to sustain and to survive. In Genesis 18, chapter 18, verses 8, he took curds and milk and the calf which he had prepared, placed it before them, angels, this is Abraham, and he was standing by them under the tree as they ate. These are the same three angels that had lunched together with Abraham before going over to Lot in Zodom and Gomorrah. In Genesis 19.3, yet he urged them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house, this is Job, and he prepared a feast for them, and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Now these three angels dined with Lot that evening. In esoteric Egyptian cosmic and mystical powers of white and black magic beliefs, holy angels eat and drink, just as evil angels do. Holy angels have also additional five senses of their angelic model body type. They have additional five senses as they are upgraded to immortal angelic body type, but not evil angels, for they lost their temporary angelic body type when they were banished from heaven. Now let me go on to Im human mortal body type. Let me go on to the dimensional views. We live in three dimensional worlds. The first dimension is solid or matter and that is the world. The second dimension is the object or solid or matter as well as in the world or planet earth. 
Then we have the movement of the objects, which is the energy in a given time, which is both liquid and thus third dimensional solids. Thus, just like when we watch cartoon movies. The movie makers are in the fourth dimensional solid or space or world to manipulate their movement. But if they were to view the reality of it being live, then they need to be in the fifth dimensional world or dimensions to manipulate our movement and not the cartoons in a movie. In order to create a three dimensional reality view, our current two dimensional solids, that is the space and the world we are in, and in the space with time, which is the third dimension, derives us of this privilege. So the object's movement in any given space is seen as the third dimension. We cannot create a third dimensional reality or view, for we live in it. That is the world we live in. So to create, we need to have the fourth dimensional view of time. And then the fifth dimensional to manipulate our existence in this universe. Thus, the aliens, or holy angels and evil angels, can manipulate our existence by God's grace and approval and condemnation. So the evil angels are living in our universe with fifth dimensional powers but restricted by God, whereas the holy angels are not restricted. So the holy angels, once they overcame the deception of Satan, that time known as Lucifer, they were upgraded to a seventh dimensional view with abstract powers of the existence of seventh dimensional views. That is, they have abstract and eighth dimensional views of the, the world or universe above them. Super cherubs that guard the pathway to other multiverses also live in the tenth dimensional views to effect change that is to limit Satan and evil angels to access both the holy angels universe or the kingdoms of heaven and also the other multiverses in existence. Let me simplify it. 1. A cartoon in a drawing or a picture of a real person is in two dimensional world. And thus a cartoon or person will only in the two-dimensional picture can move around and his viewpoints follows. This viewpoint is in the second dimension and the things viewed are in first dimension. Thus the cartoon exists only in our minds. That is the animation occurs in three dimensions. And we conceive the little man running from a minimum of three dimensions. We can look at the movie of a little man and we see an individual running. We can do this because we can see the succession of images. In our real world, we live and can perceive things in two dimensions. As we move around in the three-dimensional space, however, to view our movements, as in movies and computer programs, it is a different viewpoint from that which moves through the fourth dimension and gives us the impression of a three-dimensional world moving through time. Our body and brain operates within the three dimensions and gives us a personal viewpoint. The viewpoint that gives us the impression of time exists in the fourth dimension. Similarly, our concept of ourselves as a single being moving through time is fourth dimensional concept. Beings do not exist in the three dimensions, but only in four. The above statements applies to our world and not to other worlds. In our world, we cannot see the succession of three dimensional worlds through which we pass. We can only experience it. From fifth dimensional viewpoint, we could see identity. In our world, we notice that things appear to change with time. We stand on the other side of the road and watch a car approach. And pass. As in the case of a movie of real people like us, as opposed to the cartoon film I had alluded to in the first dimension of cartoons moving around in two dimensional spaces, so are we in two dimensions moving around in a three dimensional space. With our three dimensional viewpoints, we can compare the film with reality and discover that the actors are not the same throughout the film that there isn't really an anti any identity. In our real world, we have no such ability to check. We would not know if items were substituted in our world. That is the reason we cannot see aliens. We don't have that privilege and the capacity and the ability and the capability to do such things. 
To be able to check on this, we humans and evil mortal angels would need to be able to operate in the fifth dimensional worlds. So in our world or dimensions, abstract ideas are fourth dimensional concepts. An abstraction cannot be perceived in our world. We are aware of abstractions, but we cannot perceive them. We use symbols to represent abstract ideas, fourth dimensional concepts. Symbols are ways we can use to handle fourth dimensional concepts or abstractions. These are not fourth dimensional, but represent or remind us of fourth dimensional ideas. However, Satan and his evil angels and devils have been used to represent abstract ideas for they live in a fifth dimensional world and can know if items in our world or not in, and not in the other, for they are banished from it. The information I am now give, not going to give from here in detail where the Holy Bible is silent or grey or remains a mystery is from my esoteric beliefs and rituals. 1. Satan and his evil angels cannot effect change here on our world but just observe, though they live in a fifth dimensional world because they have been banished from heaven. You can only do that if, you, if they had remained in heaven, in that fifth dimensional world. Capacity. Two, Satan et al., that is, the other angels, evil angels, cannot inflict pain or cause death, but are allowed by the Holy God as He gave Him permission, as we find in the story in Job chapter 1, verses 6 to 10, and Job chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. So, their capabilities of effecting change on us, though they were created to live in a fifth dimensional world, to effect change in us, was suspended indefinitely when they rebelled against Jesus in heaven billions of years ago. The four guardian angels of the planet earth will step aside to allow the devil and his evil angels that is in Revelation chapter 7 to do their biddings of tempting humans in this case job and only affecting nature. Only holy angels have the powers to effect change in our three dimensional worlds by God. So the devil and the evil angels live in a fifth dimensional world and existence, but they cannot create a thing nor do only angels, nor can they bring to life a thing, but they can destroy just like us humans, who do not have the capacity and ability to create things, but we can affect emotions, influences, influences, experience of other creatures and destroy them or kill them. Thus evil angels have the ability to manipulate God's creations and creatures only if a creature succumbs to his laws of cause and effect, which I will later explain along these hundreds of lectures to be done in my YouTube channel. Let me go on to the next topic. Positive and negatives of living in a fifth to tenth dimensional world. It is both a privilege to be an alien or angelic being, either being a goody, holy angel or an evil angel like Satan. The basic proof is this according to the Holy Bible. Aliens or angels are created superior in nature in contrast to our body type which I have already addressed in the first two lectures. They have the powers more powerful than our sun's nuclear powers of rays and radiations. Therefore when they deliver God's judgment, this is our holy angels, for justification it is both death to the humans or acquittal from death by the presence of angels. That is the reason humans can die at the very moment of interactions with holy angels or may take time to die with cancer because they have nuclear radiations and their presence kills. We all know that cancer is caused by mutations of genes, by diseases or radiations from chemicals or sun's rays, thus with angels of death sent by God to people will either be consumed by fire or by their nuclear radiance or slow, or slow death by cancer, for still their light of existence of presence will mutate human cells and those condemned by God eventually die with cancer. Death to humans is first if they have shifted the inheritance boundary of another family or tribe as the Bible says, do not shift um, an ancestral boundary into inheritance lines. 
God's curse ought to that person and his descendant is to three to four generations. Therefore, sin against inheritance or land is a devastating one. That if the culprit's descendant's only chance to put a stop to this curse is to automatically return both inheritance or title or chief or rule, royal rule to the genuine owners, which their forefathers fraudulently, fraudulently stole. The reason of the curse presence to the descendants of the fourth star is that the two cherubs that guarded the gate to the tree of life in Genesis chapter 3 verses 20 to 23, God has appointed also two cherubs to guard the hidden inheritance of the tribe that is meant for their use and theirs to eternity. For that tribe and no other tribe. So like we have two angels, one a guardian to stay with us, protect us from harm and danger until we die and he remains in our on our grave to resurrect us on Christ's trumpet call similar to the dry bones of the prophet Ezekiel it is your guardian angel who will be the one to collect all your bones and form your body for he is forever signed for you to eternity and thus your resurrection in the next morning to go to heaven and if you had stolen inheritance lands that doesn't not belong to you and to your tribe you have forfeited your privilege to eternal life thus it is with the guardian angels or the two cherubs that guard your inheritance which is by tribe and family that is the reason the devil brought the colonialists with its fraud religions to alienate us from our inheritance so that both the victim and the offender will both suffer the fraudster curse forever with his descendants and use unless his descendants repent and his death does not for and Christ's death that is his death does not forgive a repentant sinner sinner who unwillingly returns stolen inheritance or title achievement or royal rule in a tribe or nation I will talk about this later on as we progress and on the blood of Jesus it only forgives unintentional sins only as it decreed in the Pentateuch or the book of Leviticus. So the blood of Christ cannot forgive, does not forgive, ever forgive intentional sins. I will talk about that later, maybe in the 50th lecture. No, I'll bring it down to the 10th lecture because it's in Genesis chapter 3. So aliens or an evil angels or angels Holy angels, however, do not have the blessings or the luxury of the gifts. This is the negative side of living or having a fifth dimensional existence. Let me read again. Aliens or angels, however, do not have the blessings or luxury and gift to procreate like God, which is the prerogative of God only and gifted to mankind or humans. I will deal with this issue later on as we go into the lecture of angels and lucifer the archangel origins this does not make us humans creator creators no we are merely procreating procreating created sperm and female eggs created by god for us to embrace in our love to each other to have kids not produce them for the material belongs to god they do not have the sexual organs these are angels both evil and holy in this sixth dimensional world their body makeup or type is pure that is invisible thus not affecting humans but can affect human nature if permitted by the holy god so they cannot have children nor do they have sexual organs or can have sex with humans as most esoteric toric, uh, religion put it and myths of other cultures Greek, Babylonian um, mythology. Therefore, evil angels, including Satan, in their fifth dimensional existence, either in the sixth or seventh, like the holy angels or the cherubs in the tenth, cannot read the minds of humans, but can only observe their actions and detect any malice or double standard characters. So they can tempt, but cannot effect or force human willpower or choice. Thus, most of the time, our lust for sin, for we were born of sin, tempts us first and not Satan. 
Though Satan would then use this opening to fully control and destroy this person with evil intent and character until the person cannot do any good or change from bad to good and God's grace is withdrawn from this person and becomes the devil's advocate, an agent to tempt and lead other good people to follow and become an advocate, an agent for the devil. With above points of Satan and his evil angels, they have limited powers to effect change in our world and do not have access to other universes or universe of the angels or the kingdom of God. Satan had one chance before Calvary, that is in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2. So he had access to that to the kingdom of heaven when he was banished from heaven as the prince of earth when he served Adam's um, position two times. Three, the aliens, both good and evil, have different powers over humans and each other. This is a fact from above, number 2c. In my stint with or as an animus priest of age 11 to 16, I cannot enter homes of those who keep the commandments of God. In astral travel and physical attempt, for two cherubs would be stationed at their house gates, and their radiance repels me and my evil angel. And if we attempt to force our way, my evil angel or the goddess will faint from the radiance of its presence. So in my early life, I had already knew that as the homes, I cannot enter. But the rest of the homes, they were easy to enter their homes, for there were no cherubs to guard the house. I would ask my guide, and she would say, for they did not honor the commandments of God nor his Sabbath. And from then on, in my animus belief, in esoteric religion, I knew if I were to join a church and escape the wrath of the devil, I must become a Sabbath and commandment keeper, especially SDA, for the two cherubs were fearful and danger to the existence of the evil angels. But back then, I did not know that they were evil angels. But I did not like the idea because I hated Seventh-day Adventists. That's why it took me a while when Jesus saved me in 1988, 1987, 1987, from the devil. It took me another five years to finally accept Seventh-day Adventists because I hated Seventh-day Adventists. Not because of this privilege, just because my relatives were Methodist church and I was living in a Methodist church land. So I didn't want to forfeit the land, which is really a stupid idea. Fourth, in my secret society days, or stint as its high priest in Fiji, we cannot enter the realm or the universe of angels, for the guardian, holy angel of the Orion galaxy would not allow us, nor even can we go closer to it. For his radiance, the super cherub, would suffer burn to the evil angel's body type. Orion was and is the gateway from the angelic universe to our earth, and our guardian angel travel from earth to the angelic universe, which is the holy bible term as the kingdom of God, through the Orion galaxy. I will expound on this issue on Orion as the gateway or teleportation from heaven to earth and earth to heaven by the angels by alluding to the book of Job and Amos on their mention of few constellations and galaxies such as Orion and Pleiades. 5. Both holy and evil angels in their fifth dimensional, that is evil angel, and seventh dimensional holy angels and super cherubs on the tenth dimensional world body type they cannot create anything but can create illusions once they hypnotize us so when i was a high priest of ramatau tribe and cult which was a branch of egyptian and a mesopotamia esoteric beliefs of cosmic and mystical powers i would act as both a priest to predict the future events and can astral travel as a fortune teller or soothsayer or what we call in Fiji the Rai Rai at the age of 11 years old and 16 years old. That is the reason I was 
call a professor in our school because I could give advice, foretell things for boys and girls who come to me for advice on boyfriend and girlfriend issues. They did not realize that I was using these esoteric powers. When I was initiated into higher level, as in the high secret, high secret society of Lucifer or Egyptian cosmic and mystical powers as a high priest in Fiji, I could levitate, teleport to any place I wished to, and mental telepathy with my associates in any other parts of the world. This was only possible with the help of my guardian angel, that is the evil angel. 6. The evil angels and Satan were vulnerable to the radiance of the holy angels and would disintegrate should the holy God wish to destroy them with his brightness. But he has set a date, another day, for that. Not now. The holy angels of the holy God live in the seventh dimensional world, thus enabling them to see and effect change to the fifth dimensional worlds of evil angels and humans' third dimensional world with fourth dimensional views and abstracts which have been used to represent abstract ideas and can know if the items are substituted in the universe of the evil angels or our human universe or in both abodes of Satan and humans of third dimension worlds. So to effect change in both our universe we share with evil angels. The holy angels have a different body makeup from evil angels for they are immortal and can effect change on human affairs and minds. They could detect a human or angel with ease that is evil. The holy angels could easily discern the minds of humans. And evil angels with the holy God can read human and evil angels' mind. The holy angels have the ability to control the evil angels and the stars and the suns for they are nuclear energy. And their body type is more powerful by a thousand times than the nuclear fission and fusion powers of stars and suns in our galaxies, in our universe. The holy angels have the ability to show themselves to us in the spirit form and co go invisible. Their radiance can burn us up, but when they minister to us for our good, that nuclear radiance of 10,000, 10, 100, or 1,000 times powerful than our sun, stars, uh, nuclear power, are in sleep mode, so we are not consumed to oblivion. But the evil humans and evil angels on. They are a consuming fire that evil angels dare not draw them near them. When holy angels are guarding commandment and Sabbath keeping humans and their houses and homes. Number eight. Though Satan and his evil angels are living in our universe, they still have the following. They one, they have fifth dimensional powers to affect us. But praise God, he has chosen his holy cherubs in our houses to keep his commandments and Sabbath, and those who are going to keep it later in life as his slight is embraced by them. Second, the angelic world or universe in the kingdom of God, dimensional views. Only the holy angels and the Lord God can create and effect change to our time of birth and death and history as a whole, but can actually step back and notice the succession of worlds apart from our world within our Milky Way galaxy and our whole universe. Evil angels have lost this ability when they were banished from it. However, holy angels cannot effect a change in their seventh dimensional world, though they have the eighth dimensional views of their superior universe that is the, its abstract from ours, the abstracts of their universe. They cannot affect change of their being and circumstances in the angelic universe. Only the Holy God can do that. Three, then we have the cherubs who guard and control the multiverses which is more powerful than our universe and to which the holy angels have no control of it as they have to, they have in our universe and this. These super cherubs who are different from the cherubs who guard us are living in the ninth dimensional view but have then ten dimensional abstract views of their universe but cannot effect change in their world of influence. Our holy transcendent God has no limited dimensional views for only thing I know is that there are more than thousand dimensional views during my esoteric experience as his hypers. Therefore, 
The holy angels live in a seventh dimensional world where they can manipulate our world and not Satan. And these evil angels, for the sole reasons, they were banished from heaven. So they cannot manipulate matters over the holy angels. So the only avenue to derail humans is to play with our minds and reasons in order to create illusions that are deceptions of the highest order in regards to human intellect and reasons. So they will create with us deceptions so that they can purport to convince us that they have the powers as holy angels, but in reality it is just them showing us through hypnotism to manipulate the existence of fifth dimensional rules. However, the Lord God has unlimited senses and dimensional views for He is the Creator. The, invest in the universe, as I postulated and proposed, has more than a thousand dimensional views and hundred thousand senses, for we see in Holy Scriptures using the multiples of tens, hundreds and thousands. As King David and Saint Paul said, we'll never exhaust to measure the length of the breadth and width of God's love and grace, for His ways are higher to be exhausted in eternity. So there are more than thousands of universe and ten thousands of cluster universe. Thus, throughout eternity, we will learn and will never exhaust the power and existence of Lord God and the Trinity. Nor can we contain or measure or find out its particular form or existence. However, these are few notes that I need to allude to to address before we go to the summary. We will never, one, we will never quantify God's existence, form or shape, nor can any of this multiverse hold him or his abode, be his abode of his body type, for these multiverses were created by him are in the palm of his hands, as we have already seen in lecture one and lecture two of Isaiah. God is endless and cannot be understood, measured, substance substantiated by any physical or natural or universal laws or theories. Thus, the Holy God cannot be quantified by existing dimensional views, senses, and of space and time now and for eternity. At three, at least, now we understand from our belief, brief, incomprehensive, in, incomprehensive lecture today, that why we have limited powers to effect change in our lives. How evil angels have powers to influence our decision and how its limitation to their control of us is good news and our holy angels can safely be trusted especially our holy creator god and redeemer in jesus christ is our only safety and safe haven to be friend and not a single creature to be trusted so we are safe in jesus christ and our holy creator god holy angels immortal body type now we can see the superiority of holy angels' immortal body type to humans' mortal body type and over evil angels' mortal body type. It gives us peace and calm to learn that evil angels are no match to our guardian angels and our Trinity God. Human mortal body type. Briefly, we now realize that humans do not have any spirit, for Jesus said, in that godly spirit and those who worship him should worship through the holy spirit and god's word which is truth or facts in the holy bible so we have the surety we have the only evidence to rely on and that's god's holy spirit which is through the holy bible we can detect and know if it's the holy spirit if it's stating things uh, or friendly to the bible it cannot come and effect a different thing. I will discuss this in a later lecture. If Jesus worshipped on Sabbath on Saturday and Seventh Day Adventist, uh, seventh day of the week, the Holy Spirit will not introduce a new Sabbath. If God and Jesus honored marriage, He cannot come and institute a new. The Holy Spirit cannot come and institute a new marriage form like gay marriage. So you need to know this. You need to know the Bible. And you, know, you need to know the difference of Holy Spirit and those who are claiming to be having Holy Spirit. The work of the whole, true Holy Spirit is incongruent and friendly to the Scriptures. doesn't bring any new fancy ideas like a new Sabbath and a new marriage.
let me go on to the summary of the lecture today. Today's lecture is the scientific approach in explaining the limitations of our powers and the powers of the angels and the evil angels. So let me go on to this summary of this brief scientific analysis of the world that we live in. Humans were created temporary angelic mortal body type in the beginning of creation. They were among the hundred Hadens and of humans created as temporary angelic body type, as alluded to Jesus in his parable. They would travel the entire universe with ease for his temporal angelic immortal body type, that is to teleport physically in, its, in this body type of angelic temporal immortality. They would communicate with other atoms freely in what we call mental telepathy. The world they would travel once in a while to the angelic universe for the creator holy god would summon his sons a meeting of hundred atoms of other earths in our universe to report of their progress as mentioned in Job chapters 1 and 2. so let me conclude by introducing lecture number four our next lecture tomorrow so in lecture four we will briefly look into these gifts blessings of god to humans and in the garden of eden which is the model for eternal life or eternity or the new earth and the new heaven that is the blessings of learning genesis chapter 1 to chapter 3. we need to be living in that constitution so we can qualify when jesus comes and if you don't live in that constitution heaven will be held to you so you must be living and acting on those principles of heaven your life your homes, your place, your experience should be a heaven on earth. May God bless you all until we meet in lecture form.